Let's talk about what I mean when I say mids, what I mean when I say top end, coloration, or a bright microphone, and a dark microphone. When I say mids, I'm typically referring to frequencies somewhere between 200 hertz and 3000 hertz, and this ties to Neumann's classifications of the different frequency ranges. Sub bass would be below 40 hertz, bass would be 40 to 200 hertz, mids or low mids would be 200 to 500 hertz, if I'm remembering correctly. That then up to 3000 hertz would just be general mids. 3,000 to 7,000 is presence, 7,000 to 14,000 is treble, and 14,000 and above is air. I think I remember that correctly. If I can find the chart, I'll throw it up, or if I can find the listing, I'll throw it up. But between 200 hertz and 3,000 hertz is what I'm referring to when I say mids. And right here, I will go ahead and add a very exaggerated mid boost. So you can hear the frequencies, you can hear what the mids sound like, because I think that is the best way for you to understand what I, what I mean when I say mids, or what Neumann says when they say mids, because without hearing it, it's just a number and it doesn't have any context. So for this last 30 seconds, 45 seconds, I have had a quite drastic boost to the mids of this microphone. Then when I say top end, this is more of an aggregate of the presence, treble, and air. So anything above around 3000 hertz is what I would classify as the top end. And I will do the exact same thing here. Now I have added an EQ that really exaggerates the top end of this microphone. I will be using a high shelf to accomplish that, a high shelf around 3000 hertz. And it should give you a good understanding or an idea of what the top end encapsulates, what the top end sounds like when I overboost it. So now you know what to listen for when I am saying top end. Then when I say coloration, that is referring to how the microphone or a piece of audio equipment is altering the sound source that it's recording. If you have a microphone that doesn't boost or cut any frequencies, that would have very minimal coloration. It wouldn't be accentuating anything. It wouldn't be attenuating anything. It would just be a fairly realistic representation of the sound source in front of it. That would not offer much coloration. But then if you have something like, I wish I had it out here, the Neumann TLM-103, it has a drastic boost in the presence treble and air, which is a colorization. It is coloring the sound source that you have in front of it. The SM7B attenuates a lot of the top end. That is adding color to the recording. So when I say coloration, that just means the sound source that is being put into it is being altered by that piece of audio equipment. Then you ask what a bright microphone and what a dark microphone sound like. I'm going to switch up microphones to demonstrate that for you. Now, before I use any other microphones, I wanted to start on a relatively neutral microphone. This is the Rode NT1. It does alter the sound a little bit, but in the grand scheme of microphones, this is a relatively neutral microphone, a relatively flat microphone. And here is what that sounds like just as a baseline. Now I have switched over to the Lewitt LCT 440 Pure or 440 Pro. I can't remember. This is what I would classify as a bright microphone because if you listen to, I'm gonna use this term, the top end, it is very exaggerated. That is the dominant sound of this microphone. The top end is really boosted by it and that's going to be exactly what some folks want. It's going to be a turnoff for other people. On my voice, I don't think it's particularly flattering, but this is what I would classify as a bright microphone. A bright microphone would accentuate the top end of the mic. All right, here is just a quick palate cleanser back on the Rode NT1, so you can hear the neutral sound of this microphone before we jump to what I would classify as a dark microphone. And now I am on the Shure SM7B, which is absolutely a microphone that I would classify as dark. And you should be able to hear the difference between the bright, the neutral, and the dark. Instead of boosting the top end, this is going to attenuate the top end. 
it's going to roll off some of those higher frequencies so it's not as crispy it's not as high fidelity sounding it's not as sharp it's not as sibilant a lot of folks will hate this type of sound but if you have specific types of voice or if you have a specific types of vo- type of voice words it's still really early forgive me if you have a specific type of voice this type of darker coloration there you go i'm using the terminology we just learned can really benefit you but if you have a very bassy voice and you need that additional clarity that is offered by something like the Lewitt LCT 440 Pro, this may not be right for you. The 7B may not be right for you because it doesn't have any boosting in the treble and air. It is relatively neutral and then rolls off the top end. There you go. I hope that gave you some additional insight and understanding of what I'm talking about when I use these terms. Let me know if you have any other terms you want me to discuss. And let me know if this was helpful.